Here we are. So I have been asked by uh, Lucas Huber a year ago or more than a year ago to uh, uh, ch chair this or be act as a main organizer for this meeting. I would like to start with the first big thank you to Lucas Huber. Uh, being a new incoming professor into Innsbruck, having been 15 years away from Austria, that was a huge opportunity for me to get to know the Austrian and the local landscape. So that was, it was challenging, but it was great fun to do that. So I would like to uh, emphasize that we had now, um, our annual meeting had 32 plenary lectures, 83 short talks, 58 science flashes. We had six industry presentations and five industry breakout rooms. Over 400 people registered to this meeting, to this meeting but of course not over 400 people attended every session. They were distributed over 15 sessions that covered everything that ranges from molecular machines, how cells are regulated into translational medicine, which is like today's lecture was really highly translational in its scope. Um, I did not organize this alone. Apparently I would have gone crazy chairing 15 sessions. I had fantastic help by this group of people of highly motivated, well-organized people who helped me chair this session. Uh, not, I chaired myself three sessions, but organized these meetings. These were excellent collaborators. Thank you all of you for your great help. Um, also, thanks to all plenary speakers that uh, gave uh, their, their presentations. We had in each session between uh, two and three plenary speakers on average. Uh, thanks to all of them, they made really our uh, annual meeting uh, much more international and really their, uh, the presentations that I managed to hear myself were really of, of high quality. Um, a special thank also to our three keynote uh, speakers, Bas von Stenzel, Lisa Henske, and Douglas Hanahan, who just gave his talk today, only to people who have registered to this meeting. So uh, a big thank you to all three uh, uh, keynote le lectures. A special thank, we cannot have them because uh, as I showed, we had more than 80 uh, short talk uh, presenters. So a special thank also to all short talk presenters the short talk presenters really gave excellent presentations. The science flashes, some of them were really highly creative, um, excellent content. And uh, also thank you to the companies for, for uh, sponsoring us, but also for um, your presentations at this meeting. I would like also to congratulate uh, the Life Science Awardees of uh, Life Science Awards Austria 21. Here is, uh, you can watch the presentations by the way on YouTube. So they were already awarded but we have uh, also awards this year. So we have two, we have awards in three categories. We have the best short talks. We have the best science flashes in, in, in the category scientific content. And we have the best science flashes in the category creative presentation. Of course, creativity doesn't, is not rewarded only. Of course, the content was also excellent. It's not that, Creative presentation means that the content was not so excellent. No, of course the content was excellent, but we emphasize here the creative aspect of the uh, flash. So uh, stay tuned. So who are the winners? The winners of the best uh, short talks are these two, Yvonne Wolfarda and uh, Miriam Efremova. Uh, for, uh, so Yvonne Wolfarda has a really short title, which I really appreciate that I don't have to read long titles. Uh, the title is really cool, Enzymes with Benefits, Thus HSD-10 Cleave Cardiolipins. I have here also noted down some of the justifications why Yvonne was awarded this. So I'm going to uh, read what I, I, I just, I, I cannot read the entire message. It was really long, but they said the project was exciting and the content, the, so the discoveries were of high relevance for diagnosis and treatment. The presentation was very clear and it allowed a diverse audience to follow a complex topic. So uh, congratulations, Yvonne, for one of the two uh, best short talk awards uh, of 150 euros. Um, uh, then the second uh, awardee is Miriam Efremova, and the title is Multimap Dimensionality Reduction and Integration of Multimodal Data. The justification here is that Multimap appears to be a highly novel and highly uh, useful tool. 
it's, uh, it, it shows a superior performance in compared to other tools for dimensionality reduction and integration of single cell omics. Again, also the presentation was very good. So congratulations to the two short talk, uh, our uh, best short talk awardees. Let's come now to the science flashes where we will have four awardees. In the category scientific excellence, we have Florian Blum from the Medical University of Innsbruck, uh, the title is Method Development Quantification of Nucleotide Signaling. Here, the justification why Florian was awarded this uh, here is that, um, that Florian Bloom is a highly uh, gifted uh, and talented undergraduate student who will uh, uh, be, so awarding him will be highly motivating for, for him and for his career. And also it was emphasized the correctness of his data analysis, which should be a role model for others. Um, the second awardee is Elena Brunner, also from the Medical University of Innsbruck. Uh, the title of the presentation was Targeting NOx4 Expressing Cancer Associated Fibroblasts in Prostate Cancer Microenvironment. Here, the justification what I extracted here uh, is that the presentation was very clear. It was easy to understand and the scientific content was highly relevant. That is what I noted down. So congratulations, Florian and Elena, for your awards. Again, two awards, each 150 euros. Uh, we have now the final two awardees. So we have Isabella Zangel from the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences in Tulln. Uh, the title is Lactobacillus Fermentum Modulates Transcriptomic Profile in a Characteristic Manner of Candida Glabrata in co-culture conditions, a bit long title, but uh, here the justification was very simple. It was a truly excellent and highly entertaining presentation. I really encourage a lot of people if, if to go and watch uh, this presentation, if they can access it or ask, ask for it, it was really highly creative. Uh, the second award is Nurin uh, uh, Neuwirth from the Medical University of Vienna. This is the longest title that we have, and it is a comparative analysis of the nutrigenomic effect of L-carnitine on the transcription regulation of liver and adipos liver cells and adipocytes under hyperglycemic and hyperlipidemic cross conditions. Um, maybe a shorter title next time, but apparently you did a great job, Nurin. Uh, here, uh, the justification for awarding this in this category was, it was very easy to follow, and also the talk showed the importance of specific L-carnitine levels for gene expression. So obviously the message was well conveyed in a very entertaining and nice and easy to follow way. So congratulations also to these two awardees, each will be awarded again 150 euros. So with this, congratulations to all the award winners. Thanks for everyone. Also, in particular, also now a final thank you to um, Andrea, Walter and Zrinke from the OGMBT back office. They really helped me a lot, including the preparation of this presentation that I'm presenting now. It was done really in a very timely manner. So thank you very much. This was really great. Ladies and gentlemen, dear members of our society, now it's time for the closing words. And in doing so, I would express my sincere thanks to Professor Hessofer and his entire team of organizing chairpersons in Innsbruck for organizing this annual event, this wonderful meeting. They have to put together an exciting scientific program. They have achieved an extraordinary reach out as counted by the number of people that we had in all different sessions at the beginning until the end. And this was mainly due to the extraordinary quality of the presentations and of the scientific talks. Therefore, my sincere thanks to all plenary speakers, to all keynote speakers, to the short talk presenters, to the science flash presenters, and also to the company presentations, to the representatives of the companies that gave also very, very interesting and insightful presentations. This is the keyword companies. What would a society be without generous donations from companies, from supporters, from the ministry. And therefore, I would like to take the time to thank explicitly all of them. 
I would like to start with our platinum sponsor, the Ministry of Digitalization and Economy. They have sponsored the scientific awards. They have sponsored the brochure, again, in a very, very generous way. And the brochure that we have put together was introduced at the beginning of the conference, at the opening ceremony. It's a documentation of 10 years scientific awards by our society. And it demonstrates what these awards have achieved, how the career paths of our young scientists that we supported were strongly supported and influenced by these awards. Have a look at uh, the brochure. It's a very, very nice documentation of our efforts and you find it on our uh, uh, homepage. Thank you to our silver sponsor, Poly Moon. Since many, many years, they are supporting us uh, with generous donations for these prizes. Without you, this would not have been possible. I would like to express my thanks to the loyalty of all the sponsors that are named here on the slide, uh, because uh, it is not uh, something that you can take as given that in a crisis, like in this Corona crisis, when you cannot have face-to-face -face meetings, real conferences, that those companies still support you and go with you. Thank you. We highly appreciate uh, your efforts and you hope, we hope that you also enjoyed uh, this meeting and that you found ample place also to uh, present yourself. Thank you to the UKMPT back office, to our former uh, head of the back office, Alexander Kasidov, who is presently on maternity leave. My best greetings uh, to you and uh, we all uh, wish you uh, all the best and hope to see you again. Thank you to Andrea Bauer, who took over the office in an incredibly efficient way, who is organizing everything uh, for us and uh, we highly appreciate uh, the quality of your work, Andrea. Walter Glaser is our backbone, uh, everything concerning IT, uh, internet, um, and also this uh, Zoom conference that we had would not have been possible without his expert help. Thank you very much, Walter. Srinka Didara is um, responsible for our reach out in the social media, for our social media accounts and for the messages that we present there and the content that we present. Thank you, Srinka, for your excellent work. And thank you, Birgit Boots for your helping hands in many, many uh, affairs throughout this meeting and throughout the year. Thank you also to our session helpers from ILSA, uh, from the South section, Daniel and Stella. And what ILSA is, I will introduce you now in the next section, because this is the official end of the 13th meeting. But I have something more to tell you about uh, ILSA and about our efforts there. So ILSA is a subsection uh, of the ÖGMPD. It's the Young Life Science Austri Scientists Austria. And um, ILSA is organized in four branches. It uh, has an east, west, south, and north branch. And um, uh, 15 volunteers are presently organizing ILSA. So what does ILSA? ILSA does everything uh, what is interesting for our young scientists. They organize career events, social events, they organize company visits. For instance, like you see here, uh, a visit uh, at Böhringer Ingelheim, uh, an online tour to the pharmaceutical industry. Um, all together, there were six of those career events and you can all of them review on our YouTube channel where you find these videos that you should really look at. ILSA is organizing life science career paths. Uh, for instance, uh, this was a life science career path with a visit uh, with Sando, uh, uh, a Novartis division. Uh, they have put together a very, very exciting event calendar. These are examples of upcoming events. In November, you have a job profile for a data scientist workshop. You have a workshop, how to build the perfect LinkedIn profile. Another job profile, um, uh, course for scientific work uh, writer in December coming up, another job profile for scientific coordinator. Uh, the workshop uh, will be announced in January uh, 2022 and another job profile uh, workshop um, in, in February. Now, um, these volunteers of, of ILSA, they provide their work power for uh, you young scientists in our society. And if you are not yet a member of our society, you should become a member. You have many, many benefits uh, for being a member. 
as I have pointed out already. And you can also meet opinion leaders. You can construct your own scientific network and you can construct your job network. So we would be very, very happy if you join in in our society. These are the announcements for the next career paths. There will be one also uh, with the CADA for the data analysis job profile and for the LinkedIn uh, uh, profile. So please uh, be aware of that and visit our website frequently that you get updated on uh, these events. This brings me also to uh, a call uh, for you to visit our social media platforms. We are present at um, Twitter, we are present at Instagram, at LinkedIn, and we have all our uh, activities recorded, uh, uh, the workshops, the job profiles in form of videos that you can look up at our YouTube channel. Next year's meeting will take place in September in Vienna. The exact date and the exact lo uh, location will be announced on our uh, webpage. Uh, we are all looking forward uh, to a face-to-face -face meeting, the first time since two years in Vienna, and we hope it will take place in the anticipated way. So this is the end, dear friends, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for joining in at our annual meeting and um, all the best for you and uh, for your colleagues, uh, your Lukas Huber. Maybe I can share an anecdote with you. Uh, regarding the last talk by Dakana, I was in the lucky situation to learn oncology at the IMP in Vienna. And at that time, Michael Bishop and Bob Weinberg uh, were on our advisory board and Dakana was on our advisory board. And I was in the lucky situation to have my lab next door to Hartmut Boyk who discovered Oncogene uh, Cooperation together with Michael Bishop and Bob Weinberg. And I was in the lucky situation to have a friend there who was next door, Gerhard Christofori, who discovered the Caturin uh, contribution to epithelial mesenchymal transition. And then Hartmut worked also on epithelial mesenchymal transition. And it was a time where oncology was printed, you know, and we were hanging on the lips of these big guys. It was an experience for me. And since then, I see oncology in a different way. I don't see it in bioinformatics space. I see it. Uh, I see it in a, in a way that is uh, very much influenced by our thinking of, of new concepts because cancer is still unbeatable. And we scientists very often forget, uh, forget the clinical reality. We should not forget, you know, all hypes about immuno-oncology, 17 to 20% respond to checkpoint inhibitors. And most of the patients are cured with chemotherapy still. And we should not forget that radiation, chemotherapy, and surgery. You need good surgery, you need a good chemotherapy, and you need a good radiation. Uh, and all those therapies are improving. And one additional thing we put on the landmark now is besides targeted therapies is, is immuno-oncology. And I was in the lucky situation to learn all that from that heroes because they came every year and they were grilling us and barbecuing us at the IMB with our progress that we made in cancer biology. And I, re I remember when Gerhard Christofori uh, discovered uh, that Ikaterian mutations make cells undergo epithelial mesenchymal transition, that they move out of the pancreas and become metastatic. Uh, Bob Weinberg and, and, and Michael Bishop uh, and Doug Hanna were defending him against the rest of the of the board who was against it because said, this can't be, you know, uh, metastasis is something different. But, so dogmas were broken by these people and we were extremely lucky that we had Doug here uh, tonight. And I would really like to thank all of you that this was possible. And you saw how tremendous the attendance was. So I think this was a masterpiece also for you to see at the end of the meeting that you organized and the back office organized how greatly that worked out, you know. On the last day, we had almost 100 people in the session. It was, it was an incredible example. Thank you, thank you so much. But we are all looking forward, maybe that we have the possibility to, to have a face-to-face -face meeting again. But please keep in mind, we have learned a lot in that crisis. We have learned a lot about social media. We have learned a lot about how you organize such meetings. 
with breakout rooms, uh, hybrid meetings. Uh, we have made mistakes, but we have learned our lesson. And I think we should take all those experiences with us for the next meeting because uh, some of the things that we had during those weeks were clearly better than face-to-face -face meetings. We were reaching more people in different areas at the same time. And one of the problems we had in the past was always, how do we reach our subgroups? The people who are more in biotechnology, the ones are more in cancer, the ones that are more in microbiomes, the, more, the ones that are more in biology, the ones that are more in neurobiology, and so on and so forth. And that was possible through this uh, arrangement with the different sessions that everybody could choose a day in the week where he would like to join. And when you sum up all those people that joined in, in these different sessions, there were not so many that were in all sessions throughout those weeks. But what we were reaching for that uh, um, strategy were all scientists in Austria. 